CataractCoach.com. A Marfan case with the Omani Iowa fixation. What's unusual is because the patient's so young, you're able to keep the anterior hyaloid face intact. So our operating guest surgeon here has a patient with Marfan syndrome, and you can see the sclera has been marked off in preparation for the Omani. So those marks are two millimeters posterior to the limbus, and then those two marks on either side are about two millimeters away from each other. So now as the pupil dilates, look at that dislocated crystalline lens. Now the patient's probably pretty young, and you can see there's no lens opacity, but there's really an absence of zonular support for at least 180 degrees, and for it to have that much displacement of the nucleus, probably even more. Notice how just a little tripan blue dye is placed. You don't want to just flood the anterior chamber, because if you do that, you're going to have that tripan go back into the vitreous cavity. It'll block your red reflex. You don't want that. So now I'm making the main incision here. I like the nicking of the limbal vessels, because in this younger patient, you definitely want this incision to seal well. Now, what's your option for removing this lens? Now, the whole lens is going to be removed. Could you save the capsular bag? You could, but then you'd have to fixate it on either side. So you could save the bag, put a seat yarn, and then put in two capsular tension segments, one 180 degrees opposite from the other, and then sew those in place, and that could work as well. So able to get a nice looking rex is done here, separating out the lens material from the capsule, and you don't even need a FACO probe. This is going to be pretty soft. You can just put in your irrigation aspiration probes. Here's a bimanual set, and it'll just vacuum right out of the capsule bag. Now, because the patient's on the young side, as you know, the vitreous is more solid, and the patient has an anterior hyaline face that's intact. So could you remove this nucleus or this whole lens, even remove that capsule, and put a Yamane lens in, while keeping the anterior hyaloid face intact. And so they're just grabbing the capsule, and you can see there's really not much support. The entire capsule can just be brought outside the eye. It's gone. So now the eye is totally aphakic, no capsule support, period. Here comes a three-piece lens for the Amani technique. So the leading haptic goes inside the eye, there's the optic, and leaving the trailing haptic outside the eye. Now, you can put a little more viscoelastic to keep that anterior chamber maintained and formed. And now it's time to place the needles to bring these haptics out through the sclera, so intrascleral haptic fixation. So there's a 30-gauge needle. Usually these are the TSK thin-walled needles. And let's we'll see, passing those. They're going to be passed from the, uh, between those two outside marks. And see, look at the mark on the needle to give it a good estimate of how far to pass it. I like that technique. That's pretty smart. So now advancing it here and then now entering the eye. And so now you can use the micro forceps to feed that first haptic into the bore um, of this 30 gauge needle, push it on in there, feed it in, feed it in, feed it in a little bit more than you think. It makes it easier so it doesn't slip out as you pull the needle through. And as you pull that needle through, there's that haptic. And again, to make your life easier, really pull that haptic out like that. I like how it has that, the IOL optic in the angle of the eye. A little bit of a cautery here. You don't need too much, just enough. And remember, the goal is to not have that um, haptic flange under the conjunctiva, but rather it needs to be within the scleral wall, within that scleral tunnel. So now here again, marking off the needle. I like this technique here to give a good idea or gauge as to how far to pass the needle. And now going in the opposite direction, going to pass this needle, and then there's the entry site, and entering into the um, eye, and then now we're going to feed that other haptic. And look how the optic is kept up in the anterior chamber. Now, a lot of times you'll see a Yamani technique where the whole optic of the lens goes deep into the eye, into the mid vitreous. We well, don't want that here. Because remember, your anterior hyaloid face is intact. And so keeping that optic up is very important. And then there's that haptic, and it can be put into that needle and then pulled out. And look at that. Now you've got the optic right on the anterior hyaloid face. That's a really neat technique. Now, I don't recommend doing this in your 80-year-old patient who's aphagic and you want to try Yamane because the anterior hyaloid face might not be intact to begin with. And as you know, the vitreous gets more and more liquefied as we age. And so a young Marfan patient who may be 20 years old, it's relatively easy to succeed here. So you can see, there we go, nicely positioned. Now don't forget, it's not over yet. You still have to get those two haptics 
and you need to get those flanges pushed within the sclera. So now here cleaning up looks like an anti vitrector setup, but I don't think there's any vitreous around. I'd probably want to put in some Triumph Sinlone at this point and just to stain to make sure there is no vitreous that's prolapsed. But per the records, a report from this doctor, he says there was really no prolapse at all. And so cleaning up here a little bit, you can also just use the bimanual vitrectomy set up here to do IA or irrigation aspiration and removal of the viscoelastic, which looks like the case in this situation. And then at the end here, we can uh, finish this up. But remember, don't forget, you got to push those bulbous flange tips into the sclera where they'll be wedged in and it's going to hopefully last this patient's life. You don't want to leave them just sitting there. And right now in this video, just above the conch or even under the conch, got to place them within the sclera. Thanks for watching.